You see, a narcissist will make behavioral modifications to blend into modern society. How do people end up getting back with a narcissist? How do people end up getting sucked back into a toxic relationship? A lot of times you'll have a narcissist, a toxic person, sociopath, psychopath, whoever, that'll end up sucking you back in, end up hoovering you back into the relationship, into a relationship that you know cognitively this isn't a good relationship, or you remember but discount the abuse that happened inside the relationship, the physical, the mental, the emotional violence that would happen inside the relationship and just be like, ah, it wasn't that bad. How does this end up happening? Why does it end up happening? You see, a lot of times, whether you discard or whether the narcissist discards, you'll end up getting to a place where they'll try to come back. And sometimes people are like, no, I don't think they're going to come back. And a lot of times they do. And what I want to caution you is to actually be prepared and be ready for someone to come back into your life that's toxic and to keep that door shut so that they can't come back in. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this platform to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. If you haven't followed us on all the other platforms, we drop nuggets of truth everywhere, every single day, to make about like four or five a day on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. We'd love to be able to have you like, rate any of the podcasts, share it with other, other people, and watch some of the videos, follow us anywhere to help with the community, and just help build awareness. If you don't follow on any of those platforms, just look me up under Raw Motivations. Raw Motivations. Just type that in. It'll pull right up. If you want to be involved in a community of like-minded people that's helping others heal, grow, and change, then download the NARC app. Just type in N-A-R-C. What it stands for is Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. It's a community of like-minded people that have come together to try to help each other grow through the crazy making, get clarity through the confusion, and help people understand what narcissism is and how to be able to overcome it. As a result, we've got courses in there about healthy dating after abuse, the gaslighting, setting boundaries, the lies that you believe, like set you free through different different um, pieces that are in there and exercises to be able to help that. If you're just here today and you don't know what narcissism is, download the NARC app. There's a free course on there just talking about uh, NPD defined, where I kind of go through the nine narcissistic traits that make up the narcissistic personality disorder so that you can understand them better and have a better idea of what's actually going on with it. We're working on some even like tests and quizzes to try to give you an idea of maybe who's toxic, who's not toxic, not a diagnosis, but just to give you an idea and more more concepts. We'd love to have you engage on the, on the platform as well. We've got weekly lives that happen inside the app. We've also got monthly coaching, the Zoom coaching with myself and other coaches around the globe to be able to help you heal, grow, change, and develop. We'd love to have you be a part of that. So please check it out. Download the NARC app. Just type in N-A-R-C. If you want to meet with me one-on-one, would love to talk to you, would love to interact with you, would love to be able to help provide clarity to the confusion and to the crazy making that happens in the relationship that you just got out of or that you're just in. I work with people each day to try to help build exit strategies or how to break the trauma bond to be able to get free from that relationship, how to be able to progress forward and get through the addiction stage and set up healthy boundaries moving forward. If that's you today and you want to talk, you can go to rawmotivations.com, click on one-on-ones. would love to interact with you, would love to talk to you. So please check that out. So we're talking today about like, how does a narcissist hoover you back? You know, because in the relationship, it gets really abusive. A lot of times it gets really mean. They'll be yelling, be, be upset, be, be cussing you out. Like sometimes there's physical violence, a lot of different things. And then it gets to the place where either you're able to get out or they discard you. And a lot of times you'll have them discard you and then they go on a smear campaign of telling people how awful you were, of how you were the abusive one. After all that, after everything that happens, you wouldn't think that they try to come back, right? And most people don't. Most people are like, no, like, I think we're good. And then a lot of times I hear from them a couple months later or six months later, and they're like, you're right. They did come back. And I should have blocked them because now I'm stuck back in it. I'm stuck back in the mess. If that's you today and you're like, wait a second, like, this is my second time, my fifth time, my 20th time, like, doing this whole thing, I want you to understand you're not crazy. But what you're going through is producing that crazy feeling, that crazy response, and we need to break you out of it because you'll get stuck in a cycle of always going back. A lot of people people question of like, not just how do they come back, but like, why do I go back? 
And a lot of that goes down to the fact of having a trauma bond, a trauma bond that knows in your mind, hey, this relationship is toxic. I have more stress. I have more anxiety. I have more fear. I have all these different things that pop up in my life when I'm with this person. But I still want them. And a lot of times that's because we're stuck on the hope, the potential, the cognitive distance that's been portrayed intermittently throughout the relationship. You see, when we talk about Hoover, we talk about a narcissist sucking you back into toxicity. Think of like the vacuum, the Hoover vacuum. It's the idea, sucking you back in into that toxic environment, that toxic, unhealthy environment. And how do they do that? Well, a lot of times when we're talking about narcissists, they do that by future faking. And future faking is one of the most popular ones that a narcissist will use to be able to get back into your life. As a result, they'll show up at your door front crying, begging, on their knees. They'll give you flowers. They'll make all these promises to do things that they've never done before, which latches on to that hope of maybe they're going to change. And typically you'll start hoping and thinking like, maybe this is actually what's going to happen. Like maybe this is the person that they're going to be to me. Like they're saying they're going to go do this. They're saying they're going to get help. They're saying they're going to get clean. They say they're going to go to counseling, all these different types of things, and that they're going to be better and nicer to me and so you latch on to that. A lot of times you latch on to the potential, the potential that they once had. And you look at it and you're like, I know that they can be this way because they were this way at the beginning of the relationship, not knowing that the majority of what they were doing at the beginning of the relationship was already fake. And it's hard because with hope and potential, like you already want to believe, right? You're already um, positioned to have a good perspective of like, I love this person, so I want to be with them. So I'm hoping and I want them to change. The problem is a lot of times they'll only show slight change for a couple weeks, maybe a month. To make you think that it's real, to make you get back in with them, to make you get back in with, be with them sexually, or make them um, end up having like the the label, you know, now you're boyfriend, girlfriend, now you're, now you're getting engaged, now you're married, now you have a kid, like whatever it might be, they do that slight change so everything goes back to normal, or we sweep it under the rug and we ignore it, to make you think that it's real, but it's not. The problem is oftentimes the change that they're exemplifying is what you gave them the tools, the list of the things that you need to say of like, well, if we we're going to get back together, like you'd have to go to therapy, you'd have to do this, you'd have to do this, you'd have to do this. And all of a sudden they're like, boom, 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 boom. And they check off everything on the list. Then they come back into your life. And then you wonder like, why is my life still feel so anxious and so toxic? It's because they didn't change. They just modified. You see, a narcissist will make behavioral modifications to blend into modern society. And as a result, they will do that time and time again to be with you to extend their stay in your life. If I can extend my stay in your life, then I don't have to worry about the image that I'm putting out there, that I'm a good person. I don't have to worry about the image that I'm putting out there, that I'm a, a loving, loving wife or a committed spouse. I'm trying to do this all the time to be able to keep a mask up. You see, when you run into narcissist. So when you run into the aspect of hoovering and sucking you back in, a lot of times you're already no contact or you're, you're separated and all of a sudden something happens and they just appear and they, all of a sudden they're back in your life. Well, it's very intentional. And I think a lot of people believe that it's just coincidence, but typically when we're talking about narcissists, it's not coincidence at all. All of a sudden you run into them at the same store. Uh, you start driving and you see them driving you run into them randomly, you know, when you're out with friends. Because a narcissist over a period of time will start to digest and learn your patterns, your behaviors, the places that you go to get used to the idea of this is what I need to do in order to be able to manipulate, in order to be able to control. And just to give you an example, whenever my wife and I go shopping, I know how she navigates the store. Like, that's not something that I've like talked to her about. That's not something that I've like sat down and figured out. I just know when we walk in the door, like typically if there's a produce section, she'll go to the produce section, then she'll go right and she'll continue through the store. Like I know exactly which way she's going to go so that if I step to the side, I can typically pinpoint where she's going to be. That's like the idea, like with a narcissist, they will get and hone in their skills to, to know your patterns, to know where you're going to be, to look at different descriptions, just to be really good stalkers a lot of times. And they will run into you on purpose. And when they do that, you're like, oh my gosh, like I didn't even realize 
Well, that's because you didn't realize what they were thinking and what they were doing to end up getting control over you. Oftentimes, you get sucked back into the relationship. You get sucked back into that toxic relationship because you think the narc wants to love you. The problem is the narcissist doesn't. They're not out there to love you. They're out there to love their mass, to love what they're putting out there. So I want you to think of a couple of things today to try to be able to help. Let's call it Hoover protection. Let's try to be able to put up Hoover protection so that they don't come back into your life. Okay. One of the first things I want to say is if you're out of the relationship, you need a block, you need a ghost, you need a go no contact, and you make sure that there's no way for them to have access to you. That means go through entire block list, all the social medias on your phone, different texting, different apps, Venmo, Spotify, Alexa, like you name it, like all those different things, those people need to get blocked and taken off different accounts because they will use anything to trigger a response from you. All they have to do is get a response. Doesn't matter. All they have to do is get a response. Doesn't have to be good, doesn't have to be bad. Just has to be a response that feeds their supply. So make sure that they're blocked, okay? Um, When you're talking about making sure that you don't get Hoovered back in, make sure if you do run into them, if something happens, tell them no. Like, make sure you understand early on if in the relationship or at the end of the relationship, like, hey, there's a boundary here. Set a boundary because they'll try to come back in your life and you need to understand like, hey, like if you're coming back in my life, here's my standards. Don't give them all of them, but give them at least a couple of like, here's my standards. See if they meet those and then see if they continue growing, healing and changing or if they just revert back. Don't jump back into the relationship. Don't think that all of a sudden they're going to magically love you because they want to propose to you or they want to have a kid when they've been gone for a while and they're hooving you back in. Make sure that the self-help work on their side they come waltzing back into your life, make sure that self-help work on their side has already been started. A lot of times people will say like, well, you know, it it would have been different like if you actually would have worked on yourself or gotten to therapy and then all of a sudden they're in therapy. So like make sure if they hoover you, if they start coming back into your life, you you also need to look and be like, okay, first tell them no and then set boundaries. And then also make sure like, hey, like if they're really trying and they're really up there, make sure that you're actually seeing that self-help has actually been started before they come back. Because oftentimes they'll be like, I just want us to work on it together. You know, I just want you to be in my life to support me. No, those are all lies and facade to keep you on the hook and to keep you still in their lives and to keep you on tap. So please be careful that that narcissist doesn't hoover you. If they pop into your life, make sure you set boundaries, make sure you tell them no, and make sure you're evaluating the people that are in your life that are spreading more toxicity.